And now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. It's totally terrific, totally transforming, and totally triumphant Tuesday as we find unity from the Father through the Son and by the Spirit, all for the glory of God Almighty. First at the core of Romans 4.18 is Abraham's response to God's promise that he would become the father of many nations. Abraham believed God, and this response is how we need to engage with God on a daily basis. When God communicates something to us through his word, we need to believe him. Next, in Romans 4.19, it says Abraham believed God, and even though he knew, it was impossible because Abraham was too old to have children. He believed anyway from a logical, practical, scientific, academic, Hollywood media point of view. It was impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. And Abraham knew that if it was going to happen, it would have to be a miracle. It would have to be God. And finally, Abraham states 420 it states that Abraham's faith never wavered. Abraham didn't doubt that God would fulfill his promise. In fact, the Bible says Abraham's faith grew stronger and stronger, which is a challenge for us. When something doesn't come to pass the way we think it should and the timing it sh we think it should, our faith should grow stronger and stronger too. David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Politics, entertainment, and current events. Personal revelations, spiritual observations. My life's insanity is noive. So much more. Now remember, it's not professional radio. It's just radio. And we're asking you, what do you think? So you can email us during the show, david at hemustincrease.org. That's david at hemustincrease.org. You can text us live during the show, 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or you can call us. I know it's a telephone. I know it's scary, but it probably won't bite you. 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. When you call, 972-445-0770. Well, guess what? You'll end up talking to Jammin' Jacob. <laughs> Talking to Jam and Jacob is like sharing a cheat meal on your diet with your favorite person. Hey. Oh. Thank you, David. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you, my friend. Talking to you is like having a double scoop of homemade ice cream, not just homemade flavors, but absolutely in a stunning Sugar cone waffle. Wow. Wow. What? I Do you like the waffle cone or do you like the, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like, the, I guess the regular. Yeah, it's the sugar cone. Yeah. So the, so here's the deal. For my whole life, for well, that's not safe. For 50 years, I have actually liked the sugar cone, but not for the reasons that people think. There are two reasons I like the, sh the sugar cone more than the waffle cone. Although, mm -hmm. although on Sunday, I had the waffle cone. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> the first reason is I am a sloppy ice cream eater. And the waffle cone tends to have a hole at the bottom of it. And if you don't eat it fast enough, the drip, drip, drip happens. 
I am professional at that. I will eat the waffle cone, and then it'll go zing right there, and the, just a little bit will drip through where the sugar cone doesn't really have that opportunity. So that, that's the first reason. Then the second reason is I love the crunch on <laughs> the sugar cone. When you get to the bottom, you get the mm-hmm. scoop down, and then the ice cream's yep. in the cone, and then you go. Yep. <laughs> I love I, I the have, crunch. I have a hilarious ice cream story. Fire you, away, my friend, it. please. I'd love to hear it. I, I want to say I was about. 12 something something like that i was in the back seat sitting behind uh my mom and uh my dad was driving and my mom was eating ice cream and uh my dad went to go roll down the window and he rolled down my mom, uh, mom's window on the passenger side she had her ice cream in her hand and the wind blew the ice cream out of her hand <laughs> went into the back seat and hit me <laughs> in the face and the chest had ice cream all over me <laughs> I still remember any, anytime, anytime I eat ice cream in the car, or you know, with other people eating ice cream, bar, I just remember that. I just that remember just so getting hit funny. in the face. Do you do you go roll up the windows? Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, what a and great I, story! And man. I was looking down eating my ice cream, and then yeah, out of nowhere, just ice cream all over me. I was like, what happened? Ice cream a face up. <laughs> it's a new brand. That is that is a great yeah. great story. Thank you for sharing that. That's very 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 funny. Yeah, that's right. funny. I still, I still think about that. It makes that's me laugh. Classic. All right, so that's what you get if you talk to Jacob. That's how it's because it's nice to talk to Jacob. So here's the deal: Why would you call? Why would you text? Why would you email? Because you might have a prayer request, and we'll pray with you. We'll br- take our faith, combine it with your faith. We'll bring it before the Lord. We'll surrender it to him because we believe that's important, but we'll have a high level of expectation. You want to know why we have a high level of expectation? For God so loved the world that he, what? He gave. God is a giver. Stop thinking of God as cheap. Stop thinking of God as chintzy. Stop thinking you've got to pry it out of God's hands. Okay, that's the wrong attitude. You do submit it. You just like Jesus when he said, let this cup pass before me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. But that doesn't mean you don't have faith. You have faith and high expectation. If the Lord says no, you know what the answer is? No. If he says wait, you know what the answer is? Wait. (laughs) That's how that works. You see, that's what the relationship's about. That's what the connection is. So it might be you have something that uh, that you uh, prayer request might be a praise report, something going on in your life. Just like I got to share this with people. People is to be so blessed to hear. I was blessed when it happened to me. Let me share this. We want you to be able to do that. We want you to be able to share some dumb joke or something that happened, just like Jacob just shared. It was excellent. What a great, what a visual that is, his mom's window that goes down and then the ice cream comes slamming back on him and behind him. I mean, what he didn't tell us is if he got to eat any ice cream, it would just hit him. We'll find out that later. We'll just get to that later. But uh, also, it could be anything you want to share, something the Lord's doing. And uh, we'll get to trivia in a second. But in the meantime, we have somebody on the phone. We want to give them a chance to share, talk. So let's do this. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hi, David. I just had a question about Job. Why did he repent at the end? I mean, he said he repented in dust and ashes, and he was supposed to be this great guy. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The thing is, Job was a great guy overall, and here's the problem. He did really good in the beginning of the trial, and this is something that we all go through. He did super. He's like, I will not curse God. I will not do this. Chapters 1 and 2. Then chapter 3 through 31, he, he spiraled out, and here's what he did. He went... He started really strong, and then he went all the way down. And when he went all the way down, he even cursed the day of his birth, which is hilarious because that does nothing. I mean, there's no effectiveness from that at all. I cursed the day I was born. What does that do? Nothing. And so at the ultimate end, Elihu uh, said to him, because he was mad at Job because what Job had done ultimately was he justified himself rather than God. And so what he did was he was saying, I'm a good guy. I've done good. I followed you. I've been obedient. I've done this. All of that because Job didn't actually understand what was going on. And that was God was bragging about him. God was going, this guy's so great. I love this guy. Look at this guy. He's awesome. Job thought he was being judged. What's that? 
I said he doesn't even need to know what's going on. Well, he that's a, that's a, a really an excellent point. That's where the trust comes in. It's like if the Lord if the Lord showed us everything at the moment, don't you think most people would just fall over, <laughs> fall over? Because we don't even know the stuff that's going on. In fact, when Elijah prayed for his servant, it's like all of a sudden the guy can see all the stuff that's going on. We don't see that. And so if we trusted the Lord, we wouldn't have to see it. We would just stand in the, he's got me, he's promised he's got me, I believe he's got me, I have faith, and he is faithful. I've heard that described as a flashlight, that the Father holds a flashlight there, and he shows you your next step. And you better take that step, but if you don't, you know, you don't have to. But if you ever showed that flash, flashlight ahead of you, you'd run the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you, if, the... if you knew what was right, and I used to say this, and people, I, it's true that people got mad at me for this, and, and I'm, I'm just going to say it, but and so please don't get mad at me, but I think if the Lord pulled the veil back and we saw all the demons and the angels all over the planet, I think a lot of us would be very, very scared. <laughs> I think we would be like, uh-oh. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Tell me more about the uh, he must increase. I'd like to know the context of that and okay. the rest of it. That's all from John 3.30. So John 3.30, that's where John the Baptist, uh, when he said, he must increase, I must decrease. Because they were like, hey, Jesus, he's getting really popular. And John's like, that's the goal. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to point people to Jesus. So that's where the ministry comes from, John 3.30, where John's whole passion for his ministry was, this is about pointing to the Messiah, not about pointing to me. Now, he was a unique fella, and I think most people would say came out with unique clothing and came on the scene, and everybody's like going, whoa, who's this guy? And everything John was trying to do was point people, be the forerunner for Jesus, so that he could he could point people to the Lord. And so when Jesus is getting popular, John's like going, hey, he must increase. I must decrease. This is about Jesus. And that's what it's that's about what for people. Think of Job. Yeah. It's the, the I must decrease part because that's kind of what you were talking about that Job made it all about him. Exactly. And when he started out, it was all about the exactly. Almighty. Exactly. That is ex- a great observation. He he was making about him. And, and ironically, the problem for the church sometimes is in Ephesians 3, 10, and 11, it talks about God demonstrating his wisdom to the uh, to the authorities and to the uh, beings in heavenly places through the church. And so sometimes the church doesn't recognize when it says all the world's a stage, that's a lot more true than people know. God uses the church to demonstrate wisdom to other beings, but we don't even know about it. He's like, look, I'm going to show you something. And then he does, he does whatever he's doing, and we're just thinking, oh, he's mad. <laughs> it's like it's got nothing to do with that. He's showing his wisdom. Stop. So that's a big part of the trust factor, believing that God has our best interests in mind all the time. That's it right And I there. think that's what we're here for is, is to be pleasing to him. And I think so many of us are worried about being pleasing to each other. Yep. And I think that uh, the collective has a lot more effect on us individually than we know. And it yeah. seems like our leadership is in rebellion. Yeah, excellent point. Really, really, really spot on. And we just need to, we, you know, what we need to do, instead of picking apart, you know, one another, and I've been saying this, and if you've listened to the show, if this is the first or you're new to the show, you'll hear this because this is one of my long-term sayings. But it, the truth of the matter is if persecution increases, which is, it's certainly heading that way, and if the, the Lord tarries and they start shooting Christians, you know what they won't be doing? The Christians, they won't be going, well, are you Baptist? Are you Pentecostal? Are you from the Church of Christ? Are you from the Church of God? <laughs> Nobody's going to be doing that when they're running yeah. away from bullets. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing yep. ever. It's gonna, we're all going to be running. I mean, that'd be the point. And the point is, look, you got to take care of one another. Jesus said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples, by your love one for another. Like, okay, let's go there. That's the place to go. And love is unity. That's yeah. what he means when he says, I am and there is none else. Yep. That Excellent. We job. all live in it and move what's, and have what's our being in it. What's your name? And what's your I name? I didn't tell you. Okay. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I haven't you... gotten it yet. He's going to give me a new name. Okay. I got to give you a name. Uh, let me give you a okay. name. Awesome Inquirer. Wow. Like I'm it? Honored. You like it? Okay. I can't put it on a plaque, though, because we don't have the money to put a plaque together. But I'm just saying, awesome inquirer. There it is. How's that? Okay. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate your show. You do good. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Great job. Don't you love stuff like that? Right? Okay. And people are like, well, I know, but what about that? Hey, stop. That was fun. It's like That's what it's fun about, right? Okay. That's all it is. Awesome. Write that down, by the way, so we can have that on a, on a list. So when he calls again. Awesome. Was it awesome inquirer? Awesome inquirer. So he's inquiring, but he's doing an awesome job. Okay, inquiring. got it. 
I could have said super seeker, but then that's so close to soaker, and I don't want to do that. So awesome inquirer. I'm just, you know, the best I can do. Okay. <laughs> this is why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Uh, okay, so uh, I do want to make sure everybody knows you can call, you can ask questions, you can call, you can, you know, wh what our goal is for those that are listening and know kind of how the show rolls, we're looking to encourage one another as we see the day of Christ getting closer and closer. There are shows before us and after us that have a different focus, and we love that because I think the biggest part about Christian radio that is supposed to be the cool part about it is that there's diversity amongst us in the different things that we hear and need, process, and go through. Okay, now the essentials are the essentials, and we need the essentials. But in these other things like this, there's a lot of there's a lot of room. Getting into the kingdom is as narrow as can be. It's through Jesus Christ. Once you're in the kingdom, you find out there's different parts of the body. And that's just cool. It's cool to learn and to grow together, isn't it? All right, we'll take a break. Then we'll come back. We'll hit up on some other things. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. What is the David Spoon Experience? When you are in the presence of the Lord and his presence is strengthening you. And we talked about that can happen through the Word of God, through prayer, and through fellowship. And then you go through some process where somebody sends you a text, or somebody sends you a letter, or somebody calls you, or somebody sends you an email, or somebody looks at you funny, or somebody kind of glances, or somebody says something about you, or you hear something about yourself, or you eat the wrong kind of tacos and you just feel bad and the joy is sucking away at the moment. Here is the answer while the devil is trying to take your joy away. Here is the key for the next 365 days for your life. When the devil takes the joy away by robbing you, you go back into the presence of God again. When the devil comes in and robs you and takes that joy, will you get up off your duff or your blessed assurance and you go into the presence of God again, be it prayer, be it Bible, be it fellowship, be it worship, be it whatever. I don't care. Get up and get back in the presence of God again. And when the devil comes around the second time and knocks on your door and you open it and he takes it from you again, then you get off your blessed assurance again and you get back into the presence of God again. And when he does it a third time, you do it again. And when he does it a fourth time, you do it again. Because the strength of the Lord is in the joy of the Lord, which is found in the presence of the Lord. And when he comes a-robbing, you go to refill. When the tank is empty, put gas in it. When you're depleted, fill it up. And you think, well, I can't do that. Why not? You did it the first time. Yes, but that was special. Why? Because you tried? Try again. But you don't understand. No, I don't care. That's much, much more heartless to say that, huh? That's a good one. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I, don't, I care about the truth. I don't care about somebody's, well, my perception, well, good for you. God bless you. When you can figure out that you can argue with God, let me know how that goes. If you win that argument, you come back. You can take the throne. But you ain't going to win it. So when the enemy comes and he comes a stealing, you do exactly what you need to do to take it back. If he steals from you, you take it right back. Why? Because you can. Because he's not empowered to keep it from you. He's empowered to take it momentarily. You're empowered to take it right back. Take it. The David Spoon Experience. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Here's your next trivia question. Get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Now, all these are which book starts with. <laughs> so you might as well just figure that out. All of these are Old Testament. This is another one that is in the poetry section of the Old Testament. Which book starts with the words of the preacher, the son of David, 
king in Jerusalem. Which book starts with that? That's the first verse in which book? If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. So it's one of the poetry books. And so you should know which five books they are. I already mentioned those. The poetry are considered poetry, and that's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Which book starts with the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Israel? Uh, let me bang the mic again since it's too close to my hand and my hands are flailing around, and so therefore I just hit it. See what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, uh, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. The book that we're looking for, it starts with the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Okay, we do have somebody who is uh, getting ready to uh, jump on, right? Are they ready to jump on? They are ready to jump on. So let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hello, David. This is Alan. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm good. Just playing some swimming pools, listening to David Spoon. <laughs> Bless you, brother. God bless you. <laughs> you too, brother. You too. In fact, I bought a couple of copies of your book over the week. Wow, that's great. I hope it's a real blessing. One of the things I discovered, this is so funny, so with uh, with Jacob, I'm doing the voicing on my first book, and I've had all kinds of problems with this first book. And it turns out I have another problem. <laughs> another problem. And there's like two 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 uh, pages that are repeated right in a row. And it's like, how did that happen? You know? <laughs> oh, it's a little misprint. That'd be fun. And I've got one for myself and one for my brother. <laughs> so classic. <laughs> anyway, all right, my friend, let me set it up for you, and then you can hit it out of the park for us. Here we go. Which book okay. starts with the words, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem? Proverbs. Okay, now, what's the one after Proverbs? Uh, Ecclesiastes. That is correct! I know! <laughs> I knew that was going to trip a couple of people up because it was, it's because it's, you know it's Solomon when you say son of David, and then the first thing you think of Solomon is Proverbs. I mean, that's, you just, you go right to it. But he's also the writer of Ecclesiastes, which is fun because when you read that book, that's one of the few books you read and you go, this guy might not have been in the best place. <laughs> he's, he's well, I might that. need to read Ecclesiastes. <laughs> I haven't read it in a while. Yeah, it's and it's just I got a couple of – Solomon, I mean, he's, he, one that built the temple. Yeah, he, he, he talks about dead, you know, dead lions and live dogs, and you're like, okay, dude, okay, oh, wow. all right, okay. sorry, sorry you're having a bad day. That's what you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just blessed to be hearing your word, and uh, it's great to hear tell the truth on the radio. Uh, we just thank love you, you, brother. Keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you, brother. God bless you, man. God bless you. In fact, let me let me and let me pray for you real quick. Can I pray for you? Okay. Sure. All right, let me pray. Let me pray. Father, I just ask you to bless Alan. He's got missionary work he's doing. He's got stuff he's got to take care of. Not easy. Tough to be on the front lines like that. That's that's neither here nor there. What I'm asking for is not just protection and pro- but, but provision for him. Natural and supernatural protection and provision that he can carry on the work that's in his heart to honor you and that you would help him at all costs. Guide him, direct him, make his path clear and bless him as he sets his hands to advance your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, David. I also got to say one thing. Is, is, uh, I went with a, a team of it's called E3, and they went left from Malawi, Africa, today. So I didn't get to go on this trip. They go five or six times a year all over the world. So wow. I'm just my first trip, and I'm just, I love it so much. I'm going to be going again. I'm just not sure when. Well, that's important. So people should be praying for the people at E3, right? It's E3? That's correct. All right. That's people correct, should be David. praying for Very that good. because they're missionarying all over the world. Alan's a part of that, but couldn't go on this last trip. But you'd be praying for them. 
provision and protection, natural and supernatural. That's what people need They'll to be, be starting up new churches over there that's, that's in these villages that are so poor they, they've never had churches, and there'll be wow. all kinds of spiritual warfare from that. Yeah. Although, some people don't understand God. Yeah, and that, that's why you just need that that much more protection, but then that much more wisdom from the Lord, that much more provision to know. That's a Amen. that's an they awesome come, thing. They come running. They're they're hungry, hungry, hungry for the word. Amen. Oh. Amen. That's right. That's awesome. We appreciate you. We'll let you go. All right. God bless you, bro. God bless you, brother. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Excellent job by Alan. Don't forget to pray for him. Don't forget to pray, by the way, for E3. So they're doing missionary work. You want to be a part of that. Let's get into the text real briefly. Right. We'll get into that. Oh, actually, we'll do DNA on the next segment because I don't want to miss DNA. Right. Is that OK? Or do you want to do that? No, we'll do that next. one. Okay. Yeah, we can do it next. You want to do it now or later? Next one. Uh We'll do it after the break. Okay, we'll let's do it, do it after yeah. the break. Okay, there you go. All right, here you go. Uh, you guys can't miss this. If you miss this, I'm. Th- it's my failure. I mean, I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, I'm doing verse 18 and 19, which I could spend the entire, this show and the next three shows the next three weeks on, but here's what it says. When God promised, promised Abraham that he would become the father of many nations, Abraham believed God. God also said, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars, even though such a promise seemed utterly impossible. But Abraham, Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though he knew he was too old to be a father at the age of 100. And Sarah, his wife, had never been able to have children. So this is just, you just do this all day long. Okay, and I want to make sure that you and I are kind of on the same page. Okay, God gave Abraham a promise. He said, you're going to be the father of many nations. That promise, by the way, is both physically fulfilled and spiritually fulfilled, as we understand and for the prior text that Abraham's the father of all who believe. That's verse 16. So we understand that God made that come true to pass because of Abraham's faith, but then also he's the father of many nations because he had physical children. And this should be something that we don't want to get too deep into right now, but there is a principle in prophecy about the, the law of double fulfillment and you know that whole realm. And it's, it's fascinating. It just tells you that God can say something once, but it can happen multiple times. In fact, David said, once, have, uh, once God has spoken, twice have I heard. So it's kind of a little bit on the nuance on that, but it's not what I want to focus on. What I want to focus on is this. Abraham knew he wasn't unaware. I I think that's the key I want to keep. I'm going to nail is that he wasn't unaware he was too old. He knew he was too old. So what happens is we encounter a situation and we're doing this in the Lord and we think, Maybe I can pull this off, right? And so we kind of like muster up a little bit of faith. That is not what, that's not the kind of faith that's being talked about right here. Abraham knew, eh, I'm too old. <laughs> you just forget. It's like, hey, Dave, you know, you got that knee injury. Uh, we'd like you to go uh, slalom skiing uh, on the hill in uh, Canada. On the highest mountain there, the peak is 17,000 square feet, and there's nothing but rocks and everything. Uh, how's, how about it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Why? Well, because I want to walk. I mean, here's the thing. What I'm trying to say is, no, that's not happening. There's an impossibility at some point on some of those things. This is Abraham going, no, no, no. It's not saying, well, it, it, something could, something, it's not, that's not it at all. Faith is the ability to look at that which is impossible insert God into the picture and say, it's possible. Do you understand that difference? Don't just, well, you know, there's an outside shot. I got a, you know, it's like a Spock thing on Star Trek. There's a one in 99,000 chance. No, it's the impossible that becomes possible because of faith. It's the entrance of the power of God, the creator of the universe, into the sphere of man, breaching from heaven into earth, changing the dynamics and bringing about the miraculous. It's the kingdom of God invading upon the kingdom of mankind and doing that which God has proposed to be done, which is accessed or encouraged or let's say vehicleized is really the, the vesselized through 
faith, and Abraham has faith even though it's impossible. He goes, I don't care. But Dave, the circumstance, I don't care. But it's, I don't care. I believe God, and God will do it. And that's it. And so you, you got to recognize, Abraham looked, he wasn't unaware, he was fully aware. This is, this is not supposed to happen. And you know what? Abraham didn't care. He had faith that God was going to do it. And God did it. And God liked that faith. That's why Abraham was a friend of God. He took his friend at his word. So that's the challenge. We need to be able to take God at his word. And so here, this is what I want you to, to, to get. You know, we're encouraged to believe whatever God tells us, whether it's through his word or in our lives. It doesn't matter, you know, what's going on. If the Lord shows us something, teaches us something, brings something to us, we need to believe it. Even if it's utterly impossible, it does not matter. God can do that which man cannot fathom. But if man can believe, man will see it. I mean, that's just the truth. And the reason it's undeniable is it can't happen. It's impossible until God is in the picture. And then the impossible is possible. Come on. Stop thinking God's chintzy, cheap, all that. God will do it. Do you believe it? That's exactly how it went with Jesus and his disciples. You know, they had some faith in some circumstances, but they needed to have absolute faith. We need to have a really pure faith. It doesn't have to be a mountain high of faith. It's just got to be a mustard seed of pure faith. No doubt to dilute it. Get it? Okay. All right, we'll take our break and then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. This KAAM radio show with your very own David Spoon is not a business but a nonprofit ministry first and foremost committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and strategically equipping the saints. Our mission is to educate, encourage, and entertain Christian believers, the hurting, and those not yet believers who need biblical truths. To continue our radio ministry and message of truth, we need many of our faithful listeners to support us as well as ministry partners who might wish to sponsor the He Must Increase ministry. By giving, you wonderfully facilitate our priorities of assertively teaching the Word of God, and you get nothing in return. No quid pro quo. Nothing but a receipt at year end indicating you gave to us since your donation is 100% tax deductible. Remember that it says in Corinthians that whoever sows generously will also reap generously, or in Proverbs where it teaches that a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. But if you cannot give, no problem. Continue to enjoy and learn and give however you see fit whenever you can. To support us, go to hemustincrease.org. That's hemustincrease.org. Such support is terribly appreciated, knowing it enables our beloved David Spoon to give to all of us his time, energy, like so few can, right here on KAAM. What is the David Spoon experience? Now, if anybody gets offended at this, I apologize that you have no sense of humor. Okay. Uh, like that? That's a good luck. <laughs> Bam, bam. All right, uh, here's the first one. A pastor was leaving his area and was saying farewell to his congregation at the church door for the last time. He shook the hand of an elderly lady as she walked out. She said, your successor won't be as good as you. Well, nonsense, said the pastor in a flattered tone. No, really, said the old lady. I've been here under five different ministers, and each new one has been worse than the last. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. But this one, this is the one that's going to offend people, which is irony, right? Because that's more offensive than this is. And this is just too f – and if you guys get offended at this, I – you know, take a, take a week off the show. <laughs> but, 
Uh, it seems there was a minister who had just all of his remaining teeth pulled and new dentures were being made. The first Sunday, he only preached 10 minutes. The second Sunday, he preached 20 minutes. But the third Sunday, he preached an hour and 25 minutes. When asked about this by some of the congregation, he responded this way. The first Sunday, my gums were so sore it hurt to talk. The second Sunday, my dentures were hurting a lot. The third Sunday, I accidentally grabbed my wife's dentures, and I couldn't stop talking. (laughs) (laughs) On Christ the Solid Rock, I stand. Welcome back. The David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Getting ready for your next trivia question. Wow. This, the last one you guys are going to have to get, but this one, this might be a little tougher. Which book of the major prophets starts this way? What are the major prophets? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Which book starts with this? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Which book starts in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim? King of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Now, that is one of the major prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, or Daniel. So Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it, which... Which which one? Before we do anything else, I will tell you how to get in touch with us and also send you to the website. Uh, we'll first, get in touch with us. You call 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. That's david at he must increase.org. I'm going to send you up to the website. Blah, 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 blah. On the website, blah, 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 Lots of cool stuff. Access to 4,500 hours of podcasts, which is a lot. Just going to say that. Uh, articles, different things. Uh, I think the articles are fascinating. The same article gets moved up at the top every June. You can figure that out. It's not complex. A uh, place for prayer requests and praise reports on the website, a place to give, plus videos, audios, and uh, other articles that are encouraging in nature. Check out the stuff on the website, he must increase dot org. Prayer request? He must increase dot org. Praise report? He must increase.org. Looking to give to this ministry? He must increase.org. Confused by what's happening right now? He must increase.org. He must increase.org. I still want one. <laughs> I don't care. Every time I hear it, I think I could have used that. Not last night, but the night before. <laughs> We could have used it today with the uh, book. Yeah. You know, that's exactly right. I mean, I'm reading it, and I'm reading the book. You know, sometimes when you're reading the book, you, you kind of mess up. That part's okay. But then as I'm reading it, I'm going, I just read this. <laughs> and I was like, well, I could have used it right there. That's an excellent point. Very, very good point. All right, uh, your trivia question, as we told you, which uh, book starts in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim? So it's Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim. I don't care. You know what? That guy, Uh, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he besieged it. Which of the major prophets does that start? uh, What's that's the first sentence in which of the major prophets? It's either Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, or Daniel. Those are your options. If you think you know, reach out to us. In the meantime, we're going to do our DNA uh, DNA is very important for us to do, and sometimes we you know, do it quicker, and sometimes we do it slower, but it's got to be done. 
because it's more important that you do it than anything I come up with. So let's do our DNA. D stands for draw closer to the Lord. Daily. Daily. Just like the Daily Planet is a daily newspaper, spend time with God daily. Period. And never be ashamed of Jesus or his words, no matter what happens. Never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I will be ashamed of you when I come in glory with the Father. Luke 9, 26. Don't be ashamed. Don't let the world shame you. They have, they're full of shame. Don't let them convince you to be people-oriented versus God-oriented in the context of trying to please people versus pleasing God. You know, people that please people, that resulted in the crucifixion of Christ. So don't go down that road. And then A, always be ready. To serve. To serve. So it's important to draw close to the Lord. It's important to never be ashamed of what he has to say, and it's important to be ready. For who knows what the Lord will use you for? You don't know. I don't know. Just what we were talking. Just like Awesome Inquirer brought up. We don't know what's going to come up. We don't. But if we are ready, if we are prepared, if we are ready to be used by the Lord, he'll use us. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be waiting. He wants us to be on top of it. He wants us to be available for kingdom use. And it's not for you to be mean or so. It's for you to be used by the Lord in whatever capacity. It doesn't matter. Just be prepared to be used by the Lord. Be ready to serve. Be a vehicle of his blessings. Okay? That is D, draw closer to the Lord daily. And never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. A, always be ready to serve. Somebody is ready to answer the trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? This is Gary. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, Gary. I... I was I was mystified when I was reading my book and repeating this. <laughs> I was so surprised. I was like, this is in the printed version. I'm repeating the same thing I already read, thinking there's a double page in here. So I was like, that caught me off guard, I will tell you. But it's not a hard fix or anything. But I just, after five years of working on it, I figured it was not there. <laughs> Guess what? Wrong. <laughs> How's your family doing? Uh, family is doing well. My wife, thank you for asking, by the way. So uh, my son is doing well. They're moving into a new place. My daughter, I talked to her the other day, and uh, Easton's been doing better, and they're uh, they're really strong in their, their family, their environment. So I'm very, very proud of her and how they're doing. And uh, my wife, I will say this, I'm glad that you brought this up, but she just graduated with a certificate in – uh, she got her certificate in flower uh, decoration, and then she got one more class, uh, one more section to go through, and then she'll be nationally certified for flower arrangements uh, throughout the world. So it's kind of like a cool thing that she's going into. And that just happened the other day. She received her uh, cert- certificate. So thank you for asking. That was very nice of you to do. I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right, let me get into the triv question, then we'll be praying for you. Triv question uh, number three, I think, for today. Which of the major prophets, which book starts in the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it? What book is that? Daniel. That is correct, Mundo. As great as the book of Daniel is, it does start on kind of a downer in that capacity. It's like, okay, well, they came over and they took over. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's not the best way to open up a book. Like, okay, everybody was lost and captive. You know, it's like, it's like wow, that's how encouraging. I hope it goes up from there. Uh, I'm going to pray for you. Anything in specific? We know it's health. Is there anything else you need cover in? No, that'll be it. Okay, let's pray then. Father, we come before you right now. We lift up our precious brother, Gary. Lord, we are going to ask you. We're not going to stop. We're going to have him not stop asking. We're not going to stop praying. We're not going to stop seeking you. We're not going to stop knocking. We're not going to do it, Lord. And we're just going to keep praying. We ask for the amazing healing power of Jesus Christ to be released in Gary's body. We can't make you do that. We can't say it must be done. We bring it before you, and we recognize Second Second Peter or 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that by his wounds we are healed. And there is spiritual healing, there is emotional, psychological healing, and there is physical healing. And we are asking for physical healing for Gary's body. We're asking for the same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit, to be active in Gary's body and to bring healing. 
we petition you, we ask you, we ask you to be willing, we ask you to, to, to demonstrate that compassion in this circumstance, and we ask you to comfort Gary, and we ask you to heal him. And we're not looking for partials, we're not looking for a little bit betters, we're looking for healing, a miraculous healing in his body, a r- miraculous healing in his blood, in his existence. We ask you to do that. You are able, and we believe you are able. And we ask you to bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you, and I'll continue to pray for all of you. Thank you, brother. God bless you as well. All right. So uh, many things to cover. Uh, I want to get into the text. I don't know if we're going to take a break or not. I think. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Here's my answer to you, Jacob. Uh, I don't know. Is that good? Is, it, is there anything else we need to do? We did, we haven't done history in a while, right? No, we haven't done history. We okay. haven't done jokes either. I don't no. know if you want to do both. or uh, No, I can't do it. We don't have time to do both. So here's what okay. I'll do. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of teaching. Then we'll do a trivia question in the history without breaking. Okay, so okay. I'll do history trivia question, and then we'll do the okay, So no the break? Teaching. Yeah, skip the break. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, so let's go into this Romans chapter 5. Now, again, I'm not going to be able to preach this word at the worth or at the value. I mean, you should just recognize that ain't going to happen. Uh, but you should recognize how powerful and just incredible this is. Here's picking it back up with Abraham and Sarah. So we just read uh, there was, you know, Abraham's Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though he knew he was too old to be the father at the age of 100 years and Sarah's wife that had never been able to have children. Verse 20, Abraham never wavered in believing in God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger And in this, he brought glory to God. So I'm going to split that up in two sections because of how powerful that is. First of all, that's the problem that I have when I'm praying. This right here. Not, not, you know, that I don't uh, never have it. I just don't do it the way that I want to do it or need to do it or long to do it maybe is a nice way to say it. Abraham knew it was impossible. He could not have kids. He did not care. He believed God. His faith was going to triumph the human knowledge because it was going to allow him to see God in the picture. And when you bring God into your picture, it changes everything. Always. But it says that he didn't waver in believing his promise. He didn't go, maybe he will, maybe he won't, maybe he will, maybe he won't. When God spoke to Abraham clearly, and he spoke to him clearly— There was no question. I don't have as much difficulty people wavering when they're not sure if it's the Lord or not. I get that. But when the Lord has spoken to you, sometimes we'll read the Word. And when you're reading the Word of God, something jumps out at you and speaks to you. That's not a coincidence. That's the Lord highlighting. That's the dynamic application principle where He's, you know, kind of shows you something. When the Lord does that, we have to believe it. We have to believe it. Wait, wait. Without wavering. And so one of the elements is that's important in the framework of scripture is not having faith that starts strong but that ends up weak or maybe better put in golf and we've said this before people when they hit the first shot that's called the drive right and the saying in golf is you drive for show but you putt for dough it's, it's cool that you drive and you hit a really long ball and everybody's like going, whoa, and they're clapping. But it doesn't matter until you finish the hole and putt. And it's how you putt at the end that really counts because that's how many strokes you have in golf. Well, in Christian faith, we've got to do a better job than, than, than just worrying about the drive and starting off with faith. We have to putt. We, we don't have to drive for show. we got to putt for dough. we got to finish strong we got to maintain our faith you can't start off on a on a five level of faith and then end up with a one and think something's really going to happen if you start at a five you got to stay at a five or even go up even increase it because it hasn't happened yet so i'm going to be even more determined i gonna be even more full of faith and what we do is we will pray about something we'll see the circumstance and we'll go oh it's not happening and then the five goes to a four 
And then the four, if it goes to a three, that's where the complaining starts. Well, you didn't do this. You know, can you still do this? Kind of like the rescue prayer. I know nobody else does that. The rescue prayer. Can you pull it out this way? Can you at least do this? See, all that stuff, all that bargaining stuff, that's wrong. We have to have faith and maintain the faith and keep the faith. That's why people aren't excited. Christians aren't excited about the return of Jesus Christ. Well, it could be now. It could be a thousand years. It could be, yeah, but that doesn't mean your faith decreases in the reality of the return. Without that return, you're not going to have much of an eternity, are you? And yet you're having faith in eternity. Hey, this has got to be more than you're hoping it's all true. This has got to be active, real faith. Situational faith and long-term faith. And for those who are thinking, well, that doesn't really talk about situational faith. Of course it does. Hebrews 4.16, you know, come to the throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and to find grace in my time of need. It's a time of need scenario with grace, and it's an overall. It's a time of need scenario with faith, and it's an overall. And we need to have faith in our circumstance, and we need to have faith in the long term. And that faith needs to be steadfast. And the excuse for not keeping it steadfast is lame. Not acceptable. Ooh, Dave, you're supposed to be talking about faith and making everybody smile. No, I'm not. I'm supposed to speak for the author and not the audience. So that, that'll take care of that. All right, take a deep breath. And we're going to do our last trivia question. Get ready. Are you still with us? Here we go. Now, you guys should get this one. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. First verse in this poetic book. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Which book starts off, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. That would be the number to call. Additionally, you can send a text, 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. Which book starts with... Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Yes, that's the King James Version. You can live with it. Is it Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, or Song of Solomon? That's the question. We do have somebody ready to answer the trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Oh, this is your little brother. Hello, little brother. How are you? Good. Good. I'm glad to hear you're good. That's great news. Very, very blessed to hear that. Are you ready for the triv? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Which poetic book starts with, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth, in the seat of the scorn. It's a book of Psalms, Psalm 1. That is correct, Amanda! Book of Psalms! You are right, Rooney. That's a good job being right, Rooney, brother. <laughs> good job. How art thou? Thou art need some prayer. Thou art needing some prayer. What you got going on? What you need? Uh, j- just pray for my house. Like, I have. I have a doctor appointment in two days, but keep praying for me. Okay, so you got healing. Health, health issues, same on the back? Same thing? Yes. Okay. Besides, there's something else, so, but that's the main one. Well, let's pray over it. Let's do it right now. Let's be in agreement. Be in agreement with me, okay? Sure. All right, let's pray. Father, we come before you right now, and we thank you, and we praise you for your awesome love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness. And, Lord, we, we petition you. 
We trust you. We bring prayer requests to you, and we know you are perfect, and you are gracious, and you are kind. And we ask you to bring your healing power into Samson's body. We ask you to touch him in his back. We know that's been uh, uh, just a difficult issue. And we ask you, Lord God, to heal whatever else he's thinking might be going on and take it away from him. Just cast it out of him and allow his body to be fully in nutrition, fully strengthened, fully functional, Lord. You, Lord God, are the creator of the body. You are able to raise the dead. And we ask you to bring healing power by the power of your Holy Spirit And, of course, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to bring that healing power into Samson and let him know he's being touched by you, refreshed and healed, and let him know it and declare, Lord, that you are faithful and true. We lift him before you. We entrust you with our brother. We ask you to bless him and encourage him and let the enemy be cast away and let his faith be strong. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. I have a quick uh, another prayer request. You could pray later on. Uh, God just connected me with a younger couple to minister to them. And, uh, yeah, just pray that God will just use me to help them to get deeper in their faith and to fully commit their life to keep walking and seeking the Lord. So, yeah, I would appreciate your prayer. Absolutely. And, in fact, so now that's something that's really important. I'm glad you said that. Everybody listening to the radio— Samson is asking for prayer so that he can be effective for God in this couple's life. That, my friends, is now your responsibility as well to pray for, that you pray for Samson to be the vessel and the vehicle that God needs him to be and wants him to be, and that that couple can draw closer to God from that process. That is everybody's burden to bear, and we ask you to do that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you so very much. All right. God and bless God you. God bless and shalom. Shalom. All right, folks. That's the show for today. You have been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the true station here in Texas, taking a 22 and a half hour break. Then we'll come back. More insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. on the preceding program were those of the speakers and not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.